What is going on guys? I'm Mario and welcome back to another Cinema 4D tutorial. So this time I had a question about how to model this sort of detail right here. And we have this detail right here. And this is what I'm going to show you how to do. And also I have a project file that came with the question. And just before we move into it, I would like to address one thing that I see here that I would like to usually and typically avoid. So for example, we have this outer edge here. Uh, try to select it. This edge. So typically what I like to do is just avoid any extrusions that are happening directly on the edge, like in this case. Uh, reason being, so for example, if I would wish to extrude now this edge, give it a bit more um, sharpness, I will have this problem that it's totally unnecessary. And also if I would wish to add an extra edge loop, I can add it here easily and here I would have a problem. So just to avoid that, let's just go right click and close the hole and remove. And what I'd like to do is just add two extra edges just in case here. And then when we go into the extrusion and when we extrude and delete, then we have a bit more, oops, then we have a bit more geometry to work on the corners. Uh, the next thing here is once you're dealing with details like that, just make sure again that you have enough geometry in the middle. So here we don't have anything in the middle. So once it's subdivided, it's kind of collapsing on itself. But once we start adding subdivision, then it's becoming a bit more stable. So let's say here and let's say here. But the other problem that comes with that is that we have edges that we added just additionally. And also we have the problem with maintaining our cylindrical shape. So these are the problems that we're going to now take a look into. Uh, I'm going to just hide this for now. And let's select the cylinder. What I'm going to do is just make sure that it's like that in size and let's go into wireframe mode. And typically what I like to do is just orient it to my axes like that. And one way of doing this is that you increase the number of rotational segments simply then you will have enough edges and they will maintain the integrity of this cylinder. So it won't, you will have enough ed edges to work with and move them around. The second thing is with the lower number of segments, but then again, making sure that you have enough edges to work with. Like for example, if we decide to take uh, this piece here, we do have at least one edge right in the middle, so we can work with that. So what I'm gonna do next is I'm gonna make this editable and I'm gonna come here and delete the lower part, control A and optimize. So now I can select this, move it a bit down, use extrude inner, and then extrude like that, Let's scale it a bit. Let's extrude it one more time and extrude down, extrude inner, and there we go. One thing here, just important to mention, uh, I mentioned in the last tutorial how you can get rid of this complex pole thing. Mm, okay, what is it? Okay, um, one more time. Let's go here. So this is complex pole and this is something that you don't want to deal with typically. And in the previous story, I'll show you how, how you can deal with that. So for now, I'm going to just leave it as it is and move into our topic. So the way that I would approach this detail is I would simply come here. And what I would do is just extrude it a bit, then choose a uh, scale tool and scale it to zero. So by holding simply shift key, you can come to 0%. And then with the move tool, just move it back into its original position. So it was here. And to do it more precisely, simply enable snap, make sure where the snap is on, and then also enable axes. So now I can take this 
while my moves tool is selected and snap it here and then choose L to disable snap to disable axes and then snap it right here and then deselect all point mode connect the points there we go and then all the thing now that is left is kind of match the curvature like that yeah and there we are so let's just add let's say small bevel here Uh, what I want to do is have zero subdivision like that. Like that. Okay, so now if I come here and add subdivision surface, you'll see that we have sort of a problem. And if I come to isoform view and turn this off, here's better visible. So even if you come here and increase the number of subdivisions still this distortion is happening and even if we come into the point mode so let's go here you will see that all of them are kind of connecting into one point and usually this it's easily fixed by selecting all of the points and optimizing and then we have it so just to put these two photos again here we have so this little detail this we pushed outwards and now we have this transition so this edge is kind of following around into this oval shape so let's do that next and if i go into okay let's just move this if i go into my edge mode turn the subdivision off so usually how you come and add edges is usually by this method and then you will see that we have already sort of a, this small transition. But sometimes what I like to do to make it even uh, kind of better controlled is just come here and select all of these edges and then use extrude inner. So when it's subdivided, it's kind of giving me a bit, a bit more clear transition and then I can easily come here and add additional edge loops uh, here we have a problem where we have a triangle but we can fix that by adding additional edge loop let's say here uh, let's say here and then what I'm gonna do is select all of these edges and simply remove And now we have a quad here. So when it's subdivided, it's still subdividing nicely. So even now I can come here and add an extra edge just to tighten all that up. And again, if I wish, I can apply edge loop here. So that we have maybe this transition, but it's not working as much. So maybe let's say here, it will be a bit better, I believe like that. Okay. Okay. So now that we have this shape established, let's go and take a look into our oval shape. So what we can do now is just kind of add edge loop here and maybe edge loop here. So let's go select this part. And what I'm gonna do is just extrude inner. And one thing that I would like to do here is go and fix a few of these points. So they're more matching in the middle. Like that. And then I'm gonna go back do one more extrude enter and then push in and then delete so when we now subdivide we should have this this shape so now the only thing is left to do is maybe it's a bit too big so what we can do here actually i went one what i can do is just scale it 
do one more extruder. Push in. And then delete. So I can now add an edge loop here and maybe two edge loops here just to stabilize. And there we are. Now, finally, if you wish to maybe change the direction of the edge flow so that you don't have the specular here going this direction, but instead going directly down so we can change that as well as you can see the edge is flowing that way so what we can do is just maybe delete these two and then create our own edge flow so in this direction instead and connect it here but now we do have some end guns so let's connect this here and do it like that and let's just optimize before we do anything else because maybe I would like to delete this part and just move this up so maybe like then we have a bit different result as you can see and again now it all depends on how close the point and edges are close to one another and it will define how sharp this transition will, will look so again it's just a matter of playing around so with this, I would like to close this tutorial and thank you for watching and see you next time.